So let's talk a little about what comes with our oil changers if they choose to get it done here. So we do the engine oil, the oil filter, and we use a factory style oil filter like I showed before, uh, the drain plug gasket, and we top off the washer fluid like so. And then we perform a courtesy health inspection that goes over, uh, it's a visual inspection, bumper to bumper of the vehicle. And it comes with uh, pictures, videos if necessary of anything that we want to bring to your attention. So we check things like your filters, we check for leaks, we check your belts, um, uh, your suspension, uh, all your fluids, your battery condition. We perform a, a cold crank hand test on the battery to see what its condition is and, uh, and then report all that to you on the repair order. So first thing we want to do is remove our oil cap. A lot of times the, uh, the oil cap will tell you what oil to use in the car. So these Hondas take a 0W20 full synthetic. So I have a nice funnel tool. So I'm gonna put that in. I always put this in the first thing I do so that when you lower the car down, you see the funnel in there, it consciously reminds you to make sure you put oil in the engine. Now, what about people that don't have a lift at their home? Well, you'd still have to lift the front end of the vehicle. So you would uh, pretty much lift it with a, with a jack at the, lift, at the uh, lift point for the vehicle on these Hondas. It's, um, there's one in each corner. And then you would make sure you put jack stands underneath the car and then just support it with the jack stands in the lift. And then the next step, I already have this off, but the next step would be to take this shield off. So there's a few bolts that hold that in place. So we take that off. And then grab our oil drain. We would have some kind of pan or... They actually sell really nice ones from the dollar store. <laughs> we have a bunch of those here for uh, oil. So then you take your wrench, you find the oil drain plug. So if you look right here, this one actually labels engine oil. Um, some will say oil drain plug or anything like that. You'll want to find your drain plug. If you don't know exactly where it is, look it up because guessing uh, could end in disaster taking out the wrong thing. Um, so this on these Hondas is the drain plug. So I'm going to loosen this. And then while that's while that's draining, I'll take a rag and I'll clean off the drain plug. We'll get this paint stuff off of here. And then you'll see on here that there's what's called a uh, drain plug crush washer. So when you tighten the drain plug down, it actually crushes this washer and seals against the oil pan so that oil doesn't leak from the drain plug. So these are a one-time use and you always want to replace this. So I'm going to go get it. Keep your pan close to your oil drain. Know that your oil is going to come out at an angle. So try and keep the pan where you think it's going to go and then follow the oil with the pan. Um, you can use a tool like this that grabs the drain plug magnetically and unscrews it. These are really cheap. You can find them at a lot of places. Um, just make sure you have your rags and pan available. Honestly, even with this, even with a lift and this and everything, there's, there's still potential for a mess. There are a few different tools you can use to remove oil filters. This is an oil filter wrench. Uh, this one, the oil filter's kind of up in there, so this one won't really work. So then you have another tool like this, that's like a claw, goes over the oil filter. to our oil filters. So our oil filter on this vehicle is right here. So I'm gonna loosen up this oil filter. Pull on there, loosen it up. Not very tight. You don't really want it. And then loosen it a little bit and oil is gonna come out. So 
So I let that oil drain for a little bit, and then once it slows down, I loosen it more and loosen it more until the oil filter comes off. I'll use a rag over the oil filter as I take it off. Bring it down the pan. You can see that my, you know, my gloves still got oil on it. It's really hard. It's hard to do an oil change without getting a little messy. A lot of videos and, you know, a lot of videos and shops will show you that you want to lubricate the oil filter uh, o-ring before installing the oil filter, um, which is true. You want to get a little oil on there. We buy a nice uh, high quality filter, which is pretty much OEM specifications um, and with Hondas and um, a lot of Japanese vehicles. The o-rings come pre-lubed and so this one's already ready to go. We don't have to put any lube on it. Uh, if you put on a dry seal while you're screwing it in and that dry seal is rubbing on that surface, uh, there's a potential, this has always been my opinion, there's a potential for that seal to be damaged. And so that seal being a little lubricated as you're spinning it on, it can slide on that surface. Um, I mean, there's even potential for the seal to come out of place and, you know, get stick and come out of place as you're tightening it down. But uh, another thing I kind of wanted to show about aftermarket filters and the filters that we use is uh, the difference between the O-rings. So the square, this old filter that's on there is one that you'll find at a, at a normal lube shop. It's just a generic kind of... Um, filter they make a filter for every car and they stock them they're really cheap uh, you can see that this o-ring is square and this o-ring is round and your round o-ring is going to seal a lot better so when you look underneath your car and you see your oil filter leaking a lot of the times it's because of the type of filter used and the type of o-ring that they use on that filter you can also see the filter that's been put on here is not oh don't want to don't want to see the uh is not the uh, specified size that Honda wants on the car. So, they're just, well, these companies will make one filter that fits a lot of cars. And now, um, and now it's, with newer vehicles, the oil filter really does matter. Uh, you can get some noise, you can get a, a lot of uh, newer vehicles will have noise if you don't put the proper oil filter on. Uh, I know like this is the same size and everything as a Subaru. I actually learned this. Uh, you could put this filter on a Subaru and it would fit, it'd be fine and everything, but the spring pressure inside the oil filter is not the same as a Subaru filter and it will cause that engine to, um, it could cause oil starvation in places and it could also cause some noise. I actually have a buddy who, uh, he worked at Honda but had a Subaru and used one of the Honda filters on his Subaru and he got a rod knock from it. Wow. So we buy genuine Subaru, even though they're, we actually, um, we actually sell them cheaper than we buy them. They're more expensive for us to buy than it is for us to sell them. Uh, but we buy genuine Subaru filters because of that, because of that fact. So I'm gonna install the oil filter. So you just make sure it screws on. You see how it just, make sure it screws on smoothly. You, do, you should not have to force your oil filter on. So, and then tightening it, uh, I mean, if you had a special tool, if you had a tool that could grab the oil filter and everything and torque it down, um, there are some tools that can go over and everything. That would be the best way. Uh, not a lot of people have that tool and you'd have to have a different tool for each oil filter. Um, so it's really kind of a feel thing. So I've been doing this for over 10 years. So it's just kind of a feel on where it should stop and how, but you want it snug, but you don't want it as, as hard as your arm can take it. So for me, what I do is I know the muscles that I need to use to tighten an oil filter and only use those muscles because if I use my whole arm muscle, it would wrench it too tight. So now we're gonna put the drain plug back in. So there's a specification, these Honda plugs, this Honda plug right here is 29 foot pounds. 
So if you have, wow, it's already said 29 foot pounds, look at that. Um, so if you have a torque wrench, you wanna use a torque wrench and look up the specification for your drain plug. And then, and then tighten it. If you don't have a torque wrench, then, uh, you know, snug, you don't wanna use, you wanna watch out for the wrench that you're using, like the wrench I took it off with. It's a very long wrench. So if you grab it from back here and tighten it, you're going to be tightening it a lot. You're probably gonna hit, you know, you know 50, 60 foot pounds before that oil pan will actually break. You'll break the thread, you'll strip the threads out of the oil pan and then the whole oil pan needs to be replaced because the whole thing's made out of aluminum and the plug is made of steel. And if you and tighten it too much, it'll rip those threads out, which happens a lot, actually. Um, it's more common than you'd think. So now that we have all of our, we have some other services to do in this, so I'm not gonna be putting the skip, the skip plate back. But uh, another good piece of advice that I like to live by is even though we're doing more services, and you know, people will say this takes more time, it's not flat rate, but uh, even though we're doing more services, we're finishing the oil change right now. Um, I don't want to get started on anything else, brakes, anything like that without putting oil in the engine. I don't want to leave oil out of the engine. I know I have my funnel on there to remind me, but you never know. You always want to finish the task that you're doing so you don't forget to do anything. And that's doing too many things at once is how things get forgotten. So now we have our oil ready to put it in. Uh, my best advice is to have the dipstick in because some cars, if you fill the oil with the dipstick out, it will, for some reason, shoot the oil out of the dipstick too. So we're just gonna make it a rule. Every car, leave the dipstick in when you fill the oil. Now, where do people look to find out how much oil they need for their car? The service manual. Uh, might have it and uh, Google is a good source but honestly um, whatever you find whatever you whatever you find online as far as how much oil to put in your car always start with less and then you can check it and go from there this one is looking pretty good but your oil filter needs to fill with oil when you start it up. So it's actually gonna lower on the dipstick. So you wanna put your oil cap back on. Don't ever start the car without the oil cap on. So we're gonna start the car real quick. Shut it down. Check your dipstick. Now what are we looking at? So this one, ha most dipsticks either have like a low, full, or an etched pattern like this. So this one says that we're about right there. So we're gonna add just a little bit more. Uh, maybe, maybe a quarter quart. Where do you and wanna be ideally? We wanna be near the top. So it just takes a little bit more. You don't wanna be over. So either at or just below the top is fine. Some vehicles like Toyotas, they want you just below the full. So uh, you wanna be around that point. Here's another example where it just has two dots. And so this is the low mark and this is the full mark. Now dipsticks don't uh, normally show you all the oil in the engine. They really, in my experience, they really only check about the last two quarts, the top two quarts. So if you have no oil on the dipstick, don't put five quarts in your engine thinking that it has no oil in it because you might have three still in it and now you're over full. So if your engine oil is low, then you add a little bit at a time and just keep checking it until it's where it needs to be. 